The saying, you are what you eat, states that what you put into your body nutritionally is what you will get out health-wise. In a world where food has become genetically modified, there could be more dangers than benefits. Assalamu alaikum, Jazakallah for joining us and welcome to Anur, the Light. Let's waste no time in finding out about biodiversity in relation to food. Genetically modified foods are seen by some as the future of the world's food supply. Read package labels in stores and you will find that a great number of products on the market contain genetically modified organisms. Genetically modified organism is an organism that has undergone transformation or a change, specifically of the genetic material, usually in a lab, where a trait which may be considered desirable from one organism is introduced into another organism in the hope that that organism will adopt or in some way be able to use that trait to its advantage. It's a relatively new technology and a lot of the research is only really coming out now about possible harmful effects. Our real contention is that we're not saying stop it completely. What we're saying is apply due precaution. There's something called the precautionary principle. We don't feel it's applied in the way that it should be. And take sufficient care to protect consumers and give consumers sufficient information for them to be able to make their minds up on their own. The African Centre for Biodiversity was established by Maria Myatt in 2004. The organisation is geared at strengthening biosafety laws and policies and preventing the spread of GMOs in Southern Africa. I started the ACP really because I needed an institutional home for myself to be able to do my activism work. We campaign against genetic modification of our food systems on the continent, and we also work towards the attainment of food sovereignty in Africa. So we have a very radical critique of what we call the Green Revolution model of agriculture, where food crops are grown in monocultures and we believe that that system is ecologically unsustainable, socially unjust, and has provided a captive market for large multinational companies to occupy and control our food system by controlling seed, controlling agri agricultural chemicals, and controlling the whole value chain in almost all major food products. ACB has already successfully stopped the release of a genetically modified potato into the South African markets due to biosafety, health and socio-economic concerns. So we research the subject matter extensively, particularly the socio-economic impacts uh, on small-scale farmers because they wanted to introduce the GM potatoes to small-scale farmers and we worked with small-scale farmers with the potato industry as well, uh, with consumers. Uh, in, ironically, the big food chains gave us letters of support. They told us that they would not use GM potatoes. Eventually, the Minister of Agriculture dismissed um, the GM potato, and that was a significant victory for us. Correct labelling of foods containing genetically modified organisms is also being monitored by the centre so that consumers have the right to choose between GMO and non-GMO foods. We had GM labelling laws, but we saw no GM labels on our products. We'd think about what, what would be useful information for consumers and select a few products from any store and then we would package it and send it to um, a GMO testing facility that would give us the percentage of GMO in relation to the whole product. And we found high levels, extremely high levels of GM maize and GM soya in all those products, and none of them were labeled. And so that campaign was, spoke about the flouting of regulations by industry. 
any company that puts their food on, on shelves for a package in a, in a package, properly packaged way needs to comply with the regulations, which is that if any, any ingredient or component, if 5% or more of that ingredient or component is genetically modified, then they need to put a label there that says contains genetically modified um, ingredients. While South Africa still has a long way to go in terms of stopping the GMO seeds monopoly, it is organizations such as the African Centre for Biodiversity who continue to fight the good fight for the benefit of the people. Well, that surely was good food for thought, and we need to be more aware of what we put into our bodies. Time now for this week's book, deck and app segment. Unleash the Power of Almighty Allah Within You is an inspiring book written by Ishmael Khala that will lift your spirits as it navigates how Islam can help one cope with the modern world. From the power of Salah to Islamic history, the author explains the Islamic way of life and how it really benefits mankind. Bringing Allah into every aspect of one's life truly is the secret to happiness and success, and this read is one you do not want to miss. Written in English that is easy to understand, this book is easy enough for any reader to gain insight into the Islamic way of life. This week's technology is the EVA Smart Shower, which is built to save water. EVA is attached between the wall and shower head and it senses your proximity to the shower head, adjusting your water flow based on what you are doing in the shower. It cuts off the water flow once you have reached the desired temperature. Also use it to time your showers, monitor your water usage and build a better relationship with the important life source that is water. Prophet Stories is an application that allows you to stay connected to the Hadith throughout the week. Have a question about Islam or the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him? Simply go on your app and search it. Read up on the life of Prophet Muhammad and be enriched by his teachings throughout the day. The African Muslim farmers are doing an amazing job with livestock and growing crops. While still a young organization, they are punching above their weight, especially through their educational programs. We spent the day with them to find out more about the awareness campaign for Muslim farmers. The Africa Muslim Farmers Association is leading the pack by introducing more and more Muslims to farming. They do this through innovative programs that inform as well as educate their membership. They are here to increase their knowledge, to a network, to have access to the information as soon as it comes from people that are, uh, are leaders in this industry, like Meadow Feeds, uh, and to take it to their farms and uh, put it into operation and uh, uh, turn it into uh, successful ventures. We feel that we should continue to add value each to the other and, and in so doing share information, increase our inputs, decrease our costs, add value to the client, um, end user organic, release equity, use that to fund uh, a, a charity, bursaries for education and uh, create employment. Farming has become an attractive business for Muslims in KwaZulu-Natal as more and more are turning to it. They are forging ahead and carving out a name as a force to be reckoned with. Suppliers are starting to take note and seeing them as a potential future market. We are happy to, to partner with, with AMFA, the um, African Muslim Associ Farmers Association, and we are, we are giving their training days and giving them more information on what our company is all about and um, just some general information. They we focus on sheep production and beef 
and we just give them more information on, on the, that industry. I think the, the Muslim farmer um, market is very important as we, we, we are always looking and growing in different areas and I feel there's a lot of potential that we can still add, um, add our knowledge and uh, all our facilities to help these guys to actually make it in South Africa on a bigger scale that they're currently doing. Today's workshop looked at various factors that influence as well as shape farming. Cost-effective measures are shared and new farmers can glean knowledge through Q&As and informal chats. They are, have invited us for a course on uh, sheep feed lotting and it's in effect our, our, our model where we, in, we as, um, educate our members so that they can be more productive, create employment, fund charity and bursaries. And as such today it's the issue of precision farming, intense farming, how you handle sheep, how you care for them, how you uh, uh, use feeding correctly um, as an entry point and then onward to uh, the market, more organic, better pricing for the end user. Um, and in effect, it's an education day. Meadow is, 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 is well known. It's been here certainly longer than, than, than uh, you know, I, I remember being a kid driving by when I uh, went to school in this area, Michael House, and it's a name brand. It's got, uh, and because of that, uh, all the support, the education, the research, the information uh, comes quicker than we could ordinarily have access to it as individual farmers. And like we said, now uh, we look at farming uh, not particularly restricted to any group, uh, religion or gender. And uh, these are the type of companies that are at the forefront of uh, information and uh, rolling it out and making it accessible and ultimately making the farmer uh, uh, um, more productive, hopefully profitable, from which he must create employment and he must fund charity and, uh, you know, the AMFA model. AMFA takes their role as change makers seriously. Apart from theoretical workshops, they also conduct visits to places of interest such as this abattoir and meat processing factory. These are all the farmers from AMFA who basically need to grow the livestock, fatten them, get them ready to be, to be sold into the market. So they need an abattoir, a halal abattoir that can service them um, and, and pay them uh, market related prices and you know that sort of thing and then what we do is then we just supply to butchers in the marketplace like the cities like Durban and and and, and then it goes the circle carries on. It's important from uh, uh, for the guys of Amfa to 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 know that they have a an abattoir that they can fully trust in that they know that they're getting the correct weights of the animals the correct grading everything is 100 percent so it's, it's, it's a very big trust thing for AMFA to know that they can send their livestock to an abattoir where they know that the animal will be taken care of properly in the correct manner. Farming has long been the preserve of the white minority in South Africa, but Muslim farmers are on the rise. There is a trillion dollar global market waiting on their product and with the halal standards in place, the sky becomes the limit. It is truly pleasing to see brothers and sisters entering an industry that was once off limits to them and making a success. We've got next month's best events right here for you. Ramadan is almost upon us and you can get into the swing of things with another exciting expo. The Cape Town Ramadan and Lifestyle Expo caters to your every need leading up to, during and after the Holy Month by bringing together a wide variety of exhibitors under one roof. Happening at the Cape Town International Convention Centre on the 4th, 5th and 6th of May, the event promises to have the best on offer to prepare you for the Holy Month. It is never too late to learn, and learning to recite the Qur'an is no exception. Youth, adults and those new to Islam now have the opportunity to learn the Holy Qur'an from scratch in a Qur'an reading course for beginners offered by the Dean's Store. The step-by-step -step course will take beginners from learning the Arabic alphabet all the way through to reciting complete ayahs. For more information, contact the Knowledge Zone on 021-696-1714. Are you a dedicated preschool or foundation phase teacher wanting to understand your students even more? Well, the Gauteng Teachers Summit could be a step in the right direction. 
happening at the Hilton Hotel in Santon on the 5th of May. The event will offer seminars and workshops from leading child development specialists, occupational therapists and more. The six-hour summit promises to equip you with a better understanding of young children so that you walk away with clear intervention strategies and ways to be the best teacher you can be. Figure yourself a fundi of food? Do you kick it in the kitchen? Is the culinary world your oyster? Then Hostix, Africa's leading culinary and hospitality expo, is for you. Taking place at the Gallagher Convention Center from the 6th to the 8th of May 2018, the event will not only have the best exhibits and features, but also include live demonstration from some of the industry's best chefs. Are you an avid traveler looking for your next adventure? Well, look no further than Africa's travel in Daba. Taking place from the 8th to the 10th of May at the Durban International Convention Centre, the event promises to bring exhibitors and buyers from various destinations together under one roof, leaving you feeling like you've travelled the world. For ticket prices and more information, visit www.indaba-southafrica.co.za. From the 24th of May to the 2nd of June, Muslim Hands will embark on their latest event, the Big Age Convoy, and they need your help. The organization seeks to fill 35 containers with rice, flour, and non-perishables in aid of feeding Syrians during the month of Ramadan. These containers will be placed at various masjids across South Africa in order to make your donations more convenient. For the exact locations of the containers or for more information, visit www.muslimhands.org.za forward slash events. Cape Town remains a popular tourist destination and Hout Bay is one of its jewels. We went to find out what to see, do and where to get a good meal in our travel segment. Hout Bay is one of Cape Town's favourite suburbs and famously declared itself as a republic as part of a cheeky tourist campaign some years ago. It continues to attract visitors with plenty of options on offer. The glass bottom boat is an old yet much loved attraction. Our basic business is taking tourists out to see the seal colony and then we bring them back. It's a short trip, it's a 40 minute trip. It's part of the Cape Point tour that the tour, tour groups offer. Anybody can come on the trip. Our main business though is tourism. It's a very, very popular trip with overseas visitors. Most of them come to South Africa to see the wildlife and the beauty, which is what we offer them. Tours are conducted from early morning to late afternoon, and although weather dependent, it is extremely popular all year round. It's a 40 minute round trip. We go out through the bay, they can see Chapman's Peak, they can see the Sentinel Mountain, and obviously we stop at the seal colony, we spend about 10 minutes at the seal colony, and then we come back. I would recommend people come on the trip because it's something completely different. It's short enough to fit into a day out. We've got all the facilities that people need. We've got a bar, we've got toilets, we've got running water, and they get 45 minutes of nature and beauty at its best that only Cape, Cape Town can offer. Through the glass at the bottom, I've seen seals swimming by the glass windows. I've seen some fish, some reef fish, and I've seen some seaweed growing on rocks, that kind of thing. It's, it's quite clear on a clear day, on a clear weather day. You can see quite, quite a lot of underwater activity there. There's lots to see in Hart Bay apart from what we do. There are lots of other tourist attractions. But it's very, very popular with regards to the wildlife that we, that we take people to see, especially the seals. There's about 10,000 seals on that colony and it's extremely popular with people. Many visitors return time and time again to sail out on this grand old lady of the sea. It is an unforgettable memory in both sight and smell as only those who've been will attest. Fire the kiln, unleash the creative juices and get ready to produce your own masterpiece. It's more than a fun day out as you get to walk away with a piece of pottery that you can call your own. The Clay Cafe is a family-run business in the heart of Hout Bay. It's a ceramic painting venue with a restaurant. We have a stunning outside area for the kids and a beautiful fresh farm-style breakfast and lunch menu. 
So when people arrive at the Clay Cafe, they can choose a variety of items. We have over 200 unfired bisque options for people to choose from. Once they've chosen their items, there's a few steps that they need to follow to be able to get started. Once they're seated, somebody gives them a full demonstration of how all the painting techniques work. And we have a wonderful space where they can get some inspiration. Once they get painting, they can order their teas and coffees and also have breakfast and lunch. So unfortunately, items aren't able to be taken home with clients when they leave. They need to be left with us to be fired and glazed. The first firing is to harden the paint onto the ceramics, and the second firing is where we glaze the items when they go back into the kiln, so that when they come out, they have this shiny effect, which you can actually see in the background here. They have to go through the kiln process, so you can use your item as a functional piece of pottery. And then all your pottery can go in the microwave, oven, and dishwasher. This is time well spent for both families, individuals as well as team building. Anyone is welcome and there are other activities to keep busy. We have a wide variety of people that come through here from all different walks of life, all different cultures, all different age groups and it's wonderful because kids can paint, mum and dad can paint, granny and grandpa can paint, we've got team buildings, we've got 50ths, we've got bridal showers, it really is something for everybody. What's really great about what the Clay Cafe offers is it's an experience. You create something with your friends and your family and you come back and it's a memory that you have of it. So it's not just a restaurant, it's something so much more and I think people are so willing to spend money on an experience because you're creating a memory. Um, it really is just something fantastic. Hout Bay is known for the positive energy that flows through it and a day spent making ceramics leaves one feeling happy and content. After a hectic day in the valley, the pangs of hunger are sure to set in and if you're in the mood for good curry, then this is where you'll get it. The restaurant has become a permanent fixture and is well known for its tasty curries and lip-smacking tandoori's. I'm doing uh, everything. There's uh, food. I love uh, making food. Menu, you know, chicken tikka masala, lamb curry, uh, lamb rogan josh, lamb karahi this uh, Indian style. All food is freshly made and can take a bit of time, but the wait is so worth it. The menu has a variety of dishes from India as well as the Far East. Although the curries are its most ordered dishes, they're also yummy Chinese and Asian foods with an Indian twist. Luckily for me, I live in this beautiful city and just found the perfect day out. Shukran for tuning in and assalamu alaikum from me, Zahra Robinson.